Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Frank's Tech Help from beautiful Waikiki Beach in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, today we're going to be covering some stuff in Final Cut Express. Um, why we are here are a few videos that I have. Um, these are my first five tests using Final Cut Express to try to accomplish various different effects. And let me play this video real quick and I'll be right back with you. Now this one didn't turn out quite as well. I, I didn't really play with it that much. I was just trying to see if I could actually get the black and white with the color object, which I did. But there's a lot of tweaking and settings that you can do to perfect it. This one's a little bit better. I simply use a chroma key here to key out the blue, a certain section of the blue in the coffee cup. This one turned out a lot better. See the reflection on my shirt if you look closely. And the flaming flashlight. I used basically the same canvas, but I added the fire video. You can also see it reflecting on my shirt. And this is just an example of chroma keying, you're selecting a specific color, which in this case I tried to select as the blue and tried to widen it as much as possible. Um, let me jump over to another video here, I'll try to make, this is just a minute and a half, so. Hey guys, today we're going to be trying a little experiment with Final Cut Express. And as you can see, I've hung up a black backdrop, I'm wearing a dark colored shirt. You can see that my skin tone kind of stands out, and what we're going to be using is a red, just just butane lid, um, a solid colored ping pong ball or golf ball or like a brightly colored like fluorescent maybe, I don't know. Um, if you can get more of a spherical object for this then it would probably work a little bit better but you gotta make sure you flood it with a lot of light so the color is seen by the software. Okay, so in this case I have this piece hung on a piece of monofilament line. You may or may not be able to see it. Um, I do have key and fill lighting, but I don't have backlighting. So the main thing is just making sure that this is well lit and that maybe you don't see the string. Um, and different effects that you can achieve is the experiment here. Um, maybe fire, a glowing object, you know. You could probably spin it around and like, ooh, ooh, like a magic ball of fire or something like that. Or you can get various other types of effects and then you know, maybe like over your hand like that, you know. So anyway, this is just an experiment, so. Okay, so just to save a little bit of time, um, I've already chopped down um, the front end of my uh, main clip that I'm going to be using here. Now this video is of me actually um, sitting with a black background, as a, you'll hear me explain in the video and everything. but. Um, Okay, so I used a black background um, so I could try to separate as many colors as possible. Um, you can pull this off with uh, various different colors in the frame, but just for the sake of this trick, I wanted to try it with a solid object here. Okay, solid color that's very offset by the surroundings, such as the tone of my skin, the black backdrop, the blue shirt, whatever. So um, you get the kind of the basic idea. Okay, so I uh, brought my video clip in and I set my endpoint kind of, you know, basically, let's see. So this is where I want to start my video. So I just, I resized my clip down and made that the beginning. Very simple, you guys should know that. Um, all right, so secondly, now what I did is I put this on the second track, okay? Because this is going to be the primary top layer of video that I'm going to use. And for my fire effect here, I'm going to drop in a little section of fire. And as you can see, um, it's not long enough, so I did a Command C to copy it. Move my mouse out here, do a paste, move my mouse out, do uh, that's Command V, by the way. All right, so there, we have plenty of fire now. And I'll size this up to the end of my clip. Come back here to the beginning. Now we have two layers. 
Now if you go to this, you're not going to see the fire yet because we're going to do a chroma key on it. So what we want to do is jump forward here on my video, let's see, until we have a pretty good clear shot of the object. So I'm going to get it when it's floating in air from the monofilament line. Okay, so we'll, we'll use this one. This is good. Okay, now what you want to do is your primary video clip um, a view with the object. You want to double click on that to bring it up here into this window. You want to come up here to effects. You want to scroll all the way down to key and select chroma key here. Drag that on top of this clip. Now you will see chroma key here up here at the top and if you click this tab and just drag it out of the window <coughs> you can work with it fine and still see your video. Now I'm not 100% sure that this is going to work. Um, the final product that you saw or will see before this clip will be the end result so um, here we go. So you want to select your eyedrop tool and you want to come in oh sorry reselect it there and you want to select you might have to do this a few times all right, so that got a fairly good sample. It's right dead center of the object, so it's not too terrible. Now, here's where the fun comes in. Um, you have edge thin, softening, and enhance. Okay, so basically, also you have your luma, um, your saturation, and your actual color. Now, since this color is in this range right here, we can expand this a little bit to try to cover. See, it's covering more area over here. So if we expand that a little bit more, so we get a pretty good overall saturation within that range, okay? You don't want to go too far because it might match your skin tone and set your hand on fire. Okay, anyway. Um, now you play with the saturation, you see how it's affecting it on the right hand side there, so let's try the Luma real quick. Alright, so if you see on the Luma how it's affecting that on the right hand side, and then let's try edge thin. See if we take it up, it expands a little bit. So let's try to leave this up here for the moment. And our softening. See if that has any. Oops. See if that has any effect on this. Oh, okay. So there we go. We are having somewhat of an effect. Let's go about right there. And our enhance. This gives more of an overall glow. That's how I did the little force field trick in one of my other videos. So I'm not really going to use any enhance, but I do want to expand my Luma some so I can cover, try to cover more area. And let's move that around and see how that's affected by... My, all right, so it's kind of centered up right there. Now, we have to play with the saturation some apparently. Let's see. That's a good place to start. I'm going to expand this a little bit, hopefully, and gain some more surface area. There we go. That's looking pretty decent. Let's see. And I'm going to go about right there. Now we can run through, since we're in the middle of editing this, and do a little preview play. Oh, see? That doesn't look too bad. So there's a good start. Okay, so basically you can play for hours and hours and hours with this until you achieve whatever effect it is you're trying to achieve. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's, um, I actually, when I went back over and edited this video, it ended up looking more like this. I decided to throw a little crossfade in and I brought in the big wave uh, video for when it's hovering above my hand and I changed some of the aspects. So. You know, you can tweak the video as much as you want and play around and um, just, you know, just know how to get your chroma key in there. And I'm sorry this one ran so long, but I just wanted to give you guys kind of an in-depth view. I'm, I'm just as new at this as anyone else possibly watching this video. So if you guys have any input, feel free to give it. Um, thanks for watching. If this video helped you out, post a comment. If not, Pope Mahone. Peace. Thanks for watching. Out.